Hello, today we're looking at a section of the M5 motorway in North Somerset. It was completed in 1973 and it runs between junctions 19 and 22. On this section we find one of the finest examples of infrastructure engineering that you probably didn't even notice as you drive towards your summer holidays in Cornwall. And last year it celebrated its 50th birthday so I thought we'd come and take a look. This is the Winnell Viaduct, unofficially known as the Gordano or Clevedon Viaduct. It's part of a two mile stretch of the M5 where its carriageways are split onto two different levels, at times at least 10 metres apart in height, and it's this carriageway split that led to the construction of the split level Winnell Viaduct. So why was it built? Because hills, lots of hills, extending from the coastline to Bristol is a ridge known as the Tickenham Ridge that in places is over 100 metres high. Road planners knew that they wanted to get the M5 motorway down to Exeter, but for them the question was, how do you get over this massive ridge with the motorway? Options that were no doubt considered included tunnelling, ruled out I imagine because of the insane costs involved, or maybe they could have routed the motorway along this nice bit of flat land. That makes a lot of sense, but it doesn't because once you get to Clevedon, you've still got a hill to worry about and the only possible option for you is to demolish most of Clevedon to make way for your motorway. Maybe not a bad thing, but in any case at the time, this was not desirable. So the perhaps obvious solution was to just send the motorway over the top, but it's not that simple. You can't just build a motorway straight over a hill. The road's incline would be too steep in this case, and larger vehicles would struggle to get up the hill, so a longer and smoother incline is required. Not only that, you've got to consider costs, maintenance, and the impact on the surrounding area, making this section of the M5 quite the engineering challenge. To achieve what they wanted, rather than blast out a massive chunk of land and put the motorway on one level, they decided to split the carriageways onto different levels because the hillside here is particularly steep, and by doing so it meant less carving up of the countryside, so basically it was cheaper and better for the environment. Or it would have been cheaper if it weren't for having to build a sodding viaduct. With little choice on motorway routing options, it was something that just had to be done. The land drops away for a short distance and as a result, a viaduct was needed. But bugger, they'd committed to that whole split level carriageway thing, so that meant the viaduct had to be built accordingly. The viaduct comprises of two separate runs of pre-stressed concrete trapezoidal box decks. The upper southbound carriageway consists of 10 57 meter long decks, and the lower northbound has nine, and they're both supported on huge concrete Piers. It's not exactly clear how high the viaduct is, but I think we're in the 35 to 45 metre sort of area, which, if you're travelling southbound, allows for a rather nice view across the county. Its design and level of engineering, to be fair, was rather good, confirmed by the fact that the viaduct has operated for over 50 years now with no major issues. It does, of course, require maintenance and inspections, which are carried out routinely, but given its unique location and setting, some of the inspection work has to be carried out by abseiling, a practice that began here during the motorway and viaduct's construction and it's still the only way to access certain areas for inspection. And there we have it. What more is there to say? It's an incredible feat of 1960s design and engineering, which no doubt started as some notes scribbled on the back of a pack of cigarettes. A few sketches later, and here we are looking at this impressive structure, which, like I said, as you head off on your summer holidays, you won't even notice. Thanks for watching.